pictures that are still unclear. Let's go by division again. Let's go to the AL East first. The Orioles are ahead of the Rays by two games right now. A bit of a tail of the tape between the Orioles and the Rays right now. Baltimore has a plus 95 run differential and a record of 42 and 31 against teams over 500. I love that stat so much. Yeah, Rays awesome. have a plus 174 run differential and a record against teams over 500 of 36 and 32, both over 500 against 500. There's yeah. an obvious difference. I don't, I don't look too much into run differential. I think it can tell a little bit of a story at the same time. Like, if the games you lose, you lose big, but you're winning a bunch of close games and you're winning more games than you're losing. Right? Yeah. It's an interesting picture. It's an interesting story, but it does it only tells a little bit of it. But it's it's texture. I would say it's just texture on the story. There you go. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I like Which that. and it, and it's an interesting bit of texture because you're right. You those close games aren't factored really heavily into that statistic, but it does give you an idea of is if they go head to head, what we can expect as far as offensive or defensive capabilities. So I put the way I the, the way I like to look at run differential is if I put them side by side, it gives me a more clear picture of what a head to head matchup might look like. There you go. Yeah, because look at the Rays, especially early in the season, offensive power really good pitching. They're gonna have a high run differential, like a high positive. The Orioles, on the other hand, they have good pitching, but it's not to the same level of the Rays. But they have a really good offense, so that's not even pretty good for a team like that, right? So yeah, I think I think you're at right, a texture. But the one that would have me worried a little bit with the Rays is the fact that when they play teams over 500, they don't do as well, right? They're only four games over five against 500, and and the Orioles, on the other hand, are like, like they win those games. They do. They play up to their competition. They win them, and that's and that I think would be the difference. I don't know what these teams look like head to head at the end of the season here, but I would put the Orioles above the race for that reason. Yep, I would too. I totally agree. But the or the Rays have a tremendous offensive capability. Like we right, just, they could blow they up could, for fifteen any given day. Yeah, if they get just uncorked for just one minute, you're going to have a problem. And there are only a couple of teams in the league that have a run differential that high. There just are. Right. We'll, yeah. We'll talk about those, but yeah, we'll it's there. not a long list. Yeah. All right. Should we move on to the AL West? Yes, please. <laughs> okay. The Mariners, my Mariners, are currently one, well, going into Monday, one game ahead of the Rangers and the Astros. Both of the Rangers and the Astros won by now. The Mariners are winning right now. So there's that going for us, which is nice. That's um nice. And then the Angels are the third are the third team play third place team, and they are eleven and a half back right. of the Mariners. Um, they've kind of spiraled of late, um, but anyway, the Mariners currently have a plus one hundred two run differential, which blows my mind that it's even that high right now. But I'd yeah. say plus uh, fun difference through the roof days. Yeah, you know, that trident is everything. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So, so awesome. here's so here's that's. Though is that none of these teams have a record above 500 against 500, right? So Texas run differential is sky high, plus 172 because they were off early. Yeah. And then Houston is plus one, plus 88. Okay, so let's go and let's look at the the record over 500. This is crazy to me. The Mariners are 32 and 33. That's the best of the bunch. The Rangers are 32 and 34, and the Astros are 32 and 38. <laughs> that's bananas and i i wonder how many of those uh texas how many of those wins texas racked up early in, early in the season when they were just putting them up on everybody you know because they last week just eight in a row right exactly so that that was ugly certainly didn't help things the astros on the other hand are a roller coaster i don't know what's going on with them they'll win by a bunch they'll lose by a bunch they'll toss a no-no they'll get shelled the next day i have no idea what's going on with the astros they don't either <laughs> i think you're right i don't think they don't have think any either. idea what's going on i think dusty baker wakes up and decides maybe which medication to take that day and that's how things go <laughs> i i don't know <laughs> like what else could it be <laughs> Whatever is in the two days, I mean, yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
I don't know. I don't know. It's it's crazy though in Houston. But the thing is, the thing that's crazy about it is that they have the experience and they are just level enough that I feel like you can't count them. And be back. You can't, right? So that's the foolish to discount the Astros. So who would you? I mean, I before I said earlier, I think that the Mariners can hold on, hold the division. Right. The schedule is favorable enough enough the rest of the way, and if. They have just enough, I believe, momentum. If they have enough momentum going into those last three series, two against Texas, one against Houston, that I think they could hold on and win it. Who do you think takes the West? Texas. You still you still have Texas. I'm still gonna, I'm gonna hold on to Texas. Yeah. Okay. All right, let's go to the NL Central. The okay. Brewers are Cubs by four games. The Reds are six games back. Possible, not probable. Uh, Milwaukee's run differential is just plus 19, but they are 37 and 36 against teams of 500. Cubs are plus 79 run differential and have a 29 and 36 record against teams over 500. But the difference with Cubs, the Brewers have been pretty level most of the season. The difference with the Cubs is they seem to have turned it on since the trade deadline. And did you hear about this break with Dansby Swinton, what he said to the front office? Before the trade deadline, what he said. So the Cubs wanted to sell, right? Yeah, the, yeah. They, the Cubs were planning on selling. So he went to the front office and said, "I read this on the score a few weeks ago," and he said, "Look, I understand wanting to sell, right? You want to get rid of guys and you want to bring in prospects and build for the future. If you want to win next year, though, if you want to establish a winning culture here next year, not sell this year because you cannot flip the switch and establish a winning culture." next year if you want to win next year establish the winning culture this year and carry it into next year and dansby swanson and his wisdom and leadership helped turn that team around man and he knows what he's talking about he does know what he's talking about he's got a ring and yeah that was absolutely fantastic and it clicked with me that that was Kyle seager's frustration all those years in seattle it was like you can't flip the switch winning culture. You've got to establish it and build it year on year. And man, the Cubs are looking like they could run at the division. I don't know if they will, yeah, but they certainly could. They could. Four games is not insurmountable. No, absolutely not. The Brewers have a bad week. The Cubs have a good week. They've got a lead. Yeah. It, and so, it's as simple as that. It's yeah. literally the way the cookies crumble. Like it's not going to come. It, it it it's so close that it might not even come down to like data or any sort of analytics capabilities. It might just come down to I didn't feel good today, and now it's over. <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> seriously, <laughs> you're not wrong. Yeah, I think I think it could. So that's going to be a really fun race to pay attention to in the yeah. rest of the way through, and keep an eye on the Reds too. I don't think I don't think they're out of it. I don't know if it's necessarily something they can catch, just because they've been they have not been as good lately, right? Like they they had a full rookie in. Full time. I know, I loved All it though. Little, like freshman freshman football players over at the varsity and Otani. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Book TV I love it. Yes, I love it too. And Noel V. Marte, I'm so excited that he's there because he's in the Seattle system for a long time. And I love that he's at the big, big level now. Good for him. Very excited. Well, and Ellie De La Cruz has been in the league for like seven minutes, and he's already in the running for rookie of the year. And he's, right. I mean, he's the most electric. Much as anybody player. else is in the National League. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I texted you the other day about Corbin Carroll's minus 3,500 to win the rookie of the year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I should have put money in when I was like called it in what March when, when he got called up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. When we talked about that deal, we should have put money on him right then and there, just yeah, to to win it. But man, yeah. So, but no, for real though, I think if Elliot Cruz had been up all year, it'd be a lot closer. The whole I do, I definitely agree with that. So yeah, okay. So who spoils whom and how, Brig? <laughs> and how? And <laughs> Helm. Um I think the I'm I'm gonna go with a hot take here and say the Cubs catch the brew crew. You no know what? I think you I think you're right with they're playing well right now. 
the Cubbies are. Yeah. I think they'll and catch I think, them. I think right. Yeah. I think the Orioles will hold on to the East. And I think mm-hmm. Texas takes the AL West. Um, and that's, I don't think, I think it's the only spoiler is going to be the, the NL Central. 